things that Allah Azza wa Jal teaches us in Quran, for example, is bi'sa ismul fusuq ba'd al iman. Even a filthy word, a corrupt word, is terrible once you have faith. Allah has blessed a human being with this tongue, with the ability to communicate. That's a gift from Allah. And we honor that gift by using this tongue for things that are noble. By, by speaking the truth, by speaking for justice, by not wasting and, and squandering this gift that Allah has given us. Now, when we speak to each other and we say hurtful things, it lasts in that moment. But when you put a, you know, an absurd and obnoxious and arrogant comment online and you become one of those trolls that say ridiculous things under videos or under blog posts, etc, etc. Every time someone hears your inappropriate comments, it's going to be a debit for you. Because you are, every time evil has increased, something bad has increased in the world, someone else has been exposed to evil because of your words, you're responsible. So in that sense, putting stuff up online, you need to be a lot more careful than you are actually in person. Because in person, that conversation died immediately. So it's sinful impact, maybe you're only accountable for it for that one moment. But when you put something up online, it's going to be visited and revisited and revisited and relived. And for every one of those occasions, you are answerable and I'm answerable. So we have to be careful about that from a spiritual point of view. The next thing I want to talk about is just, you know, uh, uh, Allah Azza he, he gives us certain social principles. Those principles, they applied in a society in Medina and they apply in the United States in 2011 and they will apply 50 years from now the ethical principles are universal and they're timeless and some of those principles are things like not making fun of others لا يسخر قوم من قوم عسى أن يكون خيرا منهم ولا نساء من نساء عسى أن يكون خيرا منهن don't make fun of each other maybe they're better than you don't let women make fun of other women maybe they're better than them you know don't call each other names لا تلمزوا أنفسكم ولا تنابزوا بالألقاب you know, don't, don't accuse people of other things, don't call each other kind, you know, uh, all kinds of names. Now if you put the, that as your constitution, your, your, your ethical code, your charter, this is how I'm going to behave online. It would probably cut down 95% of your interaction. <laughs> not making fun of people, what else do you do on Facebook? You know, not, you know, uh, not, not accusing someone of something, not commenting on somebody's photo and saying, what were you wearing? God! You know, etc. That's all we do is poke fun at each other. That's, that's you know, 90% of the interaction. That's kind of the reason I got off of it. Because all I was getting was just ridiculous, ridiculous stuff. But I've been re-motivated to jump in again. JazakAllah <laughs> khairan. Then there's of course etiquette in discourse. You know, when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would hear the most obnoxious speech, Allah Azza wa Jalla had give, taught him etiquette. Respond, but respond in a cool, calm, collected, logical and patient fashion. What do we do? Some, some video gets posted, somebody who's paid or whatever says, you Muslims are all terrorists, and some, get, some other troll gets out, oh yeah, we are terrorists, we're going to kill you. And the other guy says, of course, that's what I mean, you're terrorists. You know? you know, and we just go back and forth and we have no restrictions on how we communicate. Our deen has taught us principles of communication. We have to observe them whether virtually or physically when we interact with each other. It's, it's no different. So we have to, you know, if we just keep these few things in mind, just these few things, then I think we can have a lot healthier discourse. Actually, one of the, one of the interesting things, some of the Muslim blogs that are out there, there are very few of them, but the few that are out there, you know, most people, they don't even go, they don't even go to read the article. You know what they go for? Oh my God, that's the subject? I want to hear, I want to read the comments. You know? And there'll, there'll be like 30 pages of comments and back and forth and insults and you go, oh snap, what's he going to say now? You know, and uh, you go back and forth like that. So, th this sort of thing I think we need to mature out of. We need to move past. And we need to utilize this tool for the powerful thing that it is. Arab Spring, people, I mean, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible that that can happen. And what, what the potentials are for what we can do, the kinds of campaigns we can launch, Muslims can launch, for very particular kinds of conversations online, the potential is just enormous. It really is. But it requires what, all of us to really get our act together. You know, I really commend the successful bloggers out there. I commend the successful YouTubers out there. People like Baba Ali. I, I respect that a lot. Because we do need that kind of creativity.